Welkom bij weer een nieuwe aflevering van Coffee Met. Or Coffee With. And today we are coffee with Kirk Bevins, Chris Bray and John MC McDonald. Boys, how long are you doing this all? Uh, I've been on TV for seven years. So I'm the newbie, I'm the new kid on the block essentially. I've been on uh, I've been on TV since 1996, so mine's 23 years. I've actually been doing uh, calling for PDC. Yeah, I started um, television MC work in 1994 and 2005 with the Darts. First Kirk, what do you think at the trains in Netherlands? In the Netherlands? Brilliant, better than the UK trains. <laughs> um, cheap to travel on, um, fast. They're just very yellow, that's the only problem. They're all the same. And the NS is yellow? Yes, well, a uh, question for me, for you, uh, Ross. Um, if I'm correct, you're 62. You're, you're you are still a yeah, young yeah. guy, but yeah. um, what are your intentions for the future? How long will you do this job? As long as possible, or yeah, what are your intentions? As, as, for as long as um, for as long as anybody still wants me to do it, yeah. and um, you know, as long as I don't go soppy and say no and forget me numbers, then you know, as long as I'm able to do it, then you know, I'd certainly like to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> got a few years yet, you know, so. Uh, Yeah, just see how it goes from there. You know. It's, mm -hmm. um, I've still got as much enthusiasm there. I travel more now than I've ever done. With um, the exhibitions? The tournaments or the exhibitions? What do you mean? Both. Uh, both? Both, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do all the Asian tour. Yeah. Um, I've just come back from Australia last week. Been out in Australia for three weeks. And the week before that, I was in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. Um, so, um, yeah, I do a heck of a heck of a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. I'm away nearly 300 days this year. 300 days? 300 days this year away. <laughs> In a hotel. You, s you yeah. say the Asian tour? Yeah. What you experienced at the Asian tour the last two years? Fantastic. Watching, um, watching the guys and girls progress. It's, it's getting better in depth, which is what it's all about. It's, it's, it's a matter of getting the players there. You've got your top line players, but then it's getting better in depth. So if it gets better in depth, then obviously it pushes it forward. So the top players then have to look to their laurels and the bottom players are getting getting more and more competitive so uh, over the two years I've actually done it so far you can see that progression big time um, what's the world championships what's some of the guys in the world championships because there's um, you might be in for a couple of shocks well there is a lot of potential over there there are a lot of, a lot of people, people. Uh, <laughs> there. Yep. it's amazing so yeah hopefully no, hopefully maybe we'll see a world champion in the next decade Probably, possibly, sure. possibly, possibly in the next day, but certainly a uh, walk before you run. So um, I think that you will end up with um, certainly top Asian players within the top top 16, top eight, possibly in, in the next even in the next in the next five years. Okay, next five years. Next five to ten years. Yeah. Okay, I'm curious about that. Yeah, there you go. I think it will take some a little bit longer, but we'll see. Take Rob Cross. Yeah, that was tremendous, huh? Yeah, well, there's guys in Asia. Like, there's guys in, there's in guys, one year? Absolutely. Zero to hero in one year? There's guys in Asia that are like Rob Cross. Yeah, me. okay. So, you know, as I say, it, it's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I obviously think. But you've got a lot more choice as well. Yeah. So, just find it. Uh, a question about, uh, uh, I think most uh, uh, nice thing to do is, uh, as a caller is, is to call nine dollar. I think. Am I correct? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. Yes. Is there a competition between uh, uh, your lads? Uh, who's, who's calling the most nine dollars? Some people are following this and, yeah. and say, hey, Ross yeah. got 14 officials, uh, you got uh, two now this year, I on thought. TV, yeah. two. On TV, yeah. yeah, yeah. On TV, yeah. 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 I've lost count of the number of nines. I, I do spotting on the weekend tours as well. Yeah. So I tell the camera where to go. I've done a few of those. I can't even remember how many I've done. I don't even count. Uh, I've marked some nine darters. Mm -hmm. I lose track. But calling on TV, I've done two. Um, It's not really a competition, but you know, when someone does a nine dart on TV, which is quite rare, mm -hmm. you always, you know, you kind of know which the, who the ref is, and yeah. they've added one to their tally. But you know, they've that done it for, they've done it for years. I've done it for seven years. I got two, so I'm, I'm playing catch up all the time. So I'm never going to beat them. Well, but, you never know. He's, he's done them every time. Well, well, if he's quitting, are you, are you are t it will be there in 23 years, maybe. Yeah, well, I, mean, you, I mean, in many years, you, I mean, you've got another 30, 30 years you could do to catch well, me up. You if, know what I mean? In, in age. If nine darts so, become commonplace in mm -hmm. 10, 15 years' time, they might just change the rules and make it a 701 match instead of a 501 match, or make the treble smaller or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we're not yeah. getting nine darters anymore. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Do you think that it will go uh, that way? To I've make no it, to make it uh, less easy for players? I don't because know. Because the standard, uh, uh, the players are getting better each and each year. Yeah, we, we, they have different tournaments, don't they? Like the Grand, Grand Prix, where you start on a double, mm -hmm, finish on yeah. a double, so that makes it a bit harder, a bit different. You've got set play, you've got match play. Um, so maybe in the future, that to, to shake things up, they might have one tournament or so, where you start at 701 or 1001, mm -hmm. yeah. or one tournament on a, a quadro board, where you have the yeah, yeah. trebles and, the, and, the, and four times. Or smaller trebles, as, we, as we've said. So you know, I don't know. Champions Choice Board. That's the one. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. There's ways to gloss it up, isn't there? I think most sports have looked at that. If you look at yeah. a lot of sports, you know, you've got football with five a side, you've got cricket with 20 20. So cricket know. is the biggest innovation. Of yeah, I mean, you know, they, they've had to adapt field. to make it, you know, yeah. more, yeah. more, more, um, it's a viewable, but I think just a change really in old attitudes. And I, I still think darts is thrilling, whether it's a nine darter, and they're not as common as people would like to think but you know they are there and they are the holy grail I think making it um, tougher well if we know that I don't I don't see the point I wouldn't see the point in that but well I, but I know, it, I know but what Kurt means mm, mm, it, 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 it should be the holy grail but the holy grail is almost each weekend there mm. sometimes several times in a weekend but uh, nobody wants to see top sportsmen fail no. so if you're gonna have half to half size balls half, half yeah. size doubles mm. Is that good for the game? I don't think so, personally. It makes it harder, so of course, it'd be like making a golf, you know, golf 700 yard par four, you know, it's virtually impossible. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't make it entertaining then. It doesn't make it watchable, it makes it near impossible to achieve. Um, yes, one person will achieve it maybe once and that'll be exciting. But you don't want to see a you don't want to see a holy grail once in every 10, 12 years. You want to see a holy grail, yeah, really. you know, happen on a regular basis. Yeah. So that what, what, you know, ordinary Joe so it's, it's attainable to ordinary Joe yeah, so ordinary absolutely. person. So I that's think, how I look. I think also what the general public don't know is that in the practice room, yeah. um, pre match they happen all the time. Yeah, in all the time. It's even in the warm up. I've seen you know, in the warm up on the yeah, side. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. I've, I've seen four or five one eighties on the spin. You know, I remember Mark Dubridge getting eleven one eighties on the spin. Once. Ago, Phil right. Taylor was counting. You yeah. know, I joined it at seven in the practice room, and at seven he did another one eighty eight, another one eighty nine, yeah. up to eleven, and got a one forty. That was Mark Dubridge Ooh. in the Premier League. You know, <laughs> yeah, but you know, so it's it's very common. But then you have the peer pressure of playing on stage in front of a live audience, and that's what makes the good players great. There's very very good. Dark players out there. You that's put what, them on the stage, and annoying. suddenly, yeah. you know, it's a different it's a special pressure. Yeah, absolutely. It's what, what uh, Menzo told us yesterday here mm. also. Yeah, he, he doesn't get uh, had his best year last year, to be honest. And he, uh, he also said it. And he said, "Oh, it's, it's all about the pressure, mm -hmm. especially that's when the cameras are there and the audience are there. Um, it's it's another level to go with, and yeah. to, to to deal with. Well, and, and young players especially, because nothing can prepare a player." for what they're about to receive at the PDC. You know, if you're a good player and you've qualified for the UK Open, you could come to Minehead and be on the stage at the first match of the day in front of five and a half thousand people. Yeah. Nothing can prepare you for that. If you've been a very good amateur footballer, no. you might have played in front of thousands of people. Amateur boxer, you might have boxed in front of thousands of people. There is nothing in the world of darts that can prepare you for what we are about to, to, to deliver. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the big business, and that's what's happened to our sport. I've noticed that in in my short time in darts, that it's gone from you know the leisure centres and, and and the small theatres to the big stadiums, yeah. and that players have to adapt to that. Some can, some can't. You know that's a fact of life. You heard the the, the term when a sportsman freezes for the yeah, occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dare I say that there's been comments today that England froze in the World Cup final in rugby today. You know, these things happen. You, the peer pressure of a player is very hard to, to, to gauge. And the beauty of that is, is um, I know you use the comparison here of England playing rugby today. Yeah. Um, you've got 15 players on the pitch there that froze. Mm -hmm. You're one person on your own. Yeah. You are one yeah, person. Yeah. You are easy. You can't hide you know, behind you your team players. It's one, of the, it's one of the only sports um, where you cannot start off defensive. No. You can't think, oh, I'll just a nice easy 60 here just to get myself in. You've got to go for 180 straight away. You've got to be yep. offensive immediately. You can't play it defensive. You know, <coughs> snooker, yeah, I can hit the ball, bang, into play. I'll put it behind the white so, so they can't go to another shot. Yeah. This, you have got to go offensive yes. from the off. Um, no two ways about it. It's as simple as that. And the only person you can rely on is you. 
<coughs> you can't rely on the team right. member. You've got, you can't no. hide. You've got nowhere to go. No. And if you're having a bad day at the office, there is God knows how many cameras pointing at you in so many different directions showing you where you're having a bad day. So it, it's, it's a very unique sport in that yeah. way. Very unique sport. Pressure should be uh, tremendous. I'm, yeah, but it no, is. No, regular people have never been there. I can't, can't well, they even comprehend the pressure. And also, also the general public are getting a massive insight into it because, you know, they can pretty much leave the comfort of their front room watching us on TV, go into their uh, dining room or their kitchen and start to throw darts. Mm-hmm. You know, but nothing could explain the pressure that these players are under. And it's, um, it, I, I, I really do have a great deal of time for our players, I think. Um, they don't get the credit they deserve in many ways. It is not just a game of darts at all. That, that's long been proven. Absolutely. This is a very, very skillful, professional business. And, um, you know, I think people like me that haven't come through darts, that suddenly ended up in the sport, um, have a very, very healthy respect for it and the players. Um, and I think the general public are starting to see that, not just the entertainment level. I think they're starting to appreciate how skillful and how tough their job is. It's well, not a legend. You see them on a daily basis, huh? So yeah. You know what they uh, have to do for it. Of course. It's not a legend now, it's a sport. And yeah. that is exactly what it is. It is a sport. And it's a sport played at the very, very highest level. When you get the high level guys, your Michael Van Gogh, mm-hmm. your Gary Andersons, Peter Wrights, these type of people um, playing the game at, the, at its highest, mm-hmm. highest possible level. The skill factor, as John just said, the skill mm. factor is immense. It's yeah, immense. You, you, you're putting you, this implement you, you into a small space like that. Mm. You know, you're going, you know, and to do it nine times, we was on about the nine data there, weren't we? To do that nine times on mm. the go, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. I'm and agreeing course, with that. And, and of course, the, the very the variation of that nine data as well, because mm. there's a number of ways you can do it, you know, and... and um, I think it's 3,000. 3,000, I nearly 4,000 yeah. ways to do a nine data. Yeah, yeah that's well, it, it, phenomenal, it? isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that in itself, but um, you, you um, when, when the fans look at the game, and I think they should all just take a step back for a minute and just remember just how skillful this game is and how much work goes into it and, and I think they would have a healthier respect mm-hmm. especially if they try the game they should all try the game it's very very good then for youngsters see, uh, yeah. you yeah. know I mean Kirk, Kirk um, has, 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 has been a teacher and he knows how important it is mental arithmetic in everyday life and to teach a young child that I was watching um, young Michael Smith's son very very young boy marking a game the other day Sweet. And, I, and I'm I have a, a, a massive respect for those youngsters yeah. that can that can do this terrific um, mental arithmetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that's what that's what gets people interested in the game, though. They look yeah. at it and think, "Oh, yeah, I can do that." And then they stand there and realise on a Friday night they say, yeah, yeah. "All the holes in the skirt, in ball in the wall." You know what I mean? But they know they can't. Yeah. Everybody, right, everybody somewhere in general has thrown the dart. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to a fairground, you know, you've got a dart, you've got a burst of balloon or put it into a card or something. So nearly everybody has played darts mm-hmm. somewhere along the line. Yeah. Um, and it's, it is a game that everybody can do. You can be of any disability. Mm-hmm. You can be yeah. any height, any size. It, it doesn't, you know, it has no, it has no, no prejudice, no, the game. No. And uh, it, it's, it'll be a lot of fun. And as I say, that boy's taking it to the top level like they mm. do. You know, it's very lucrative. You know, I mean, yeah. Michael Van Gogh, 30 years of age, and he's a multi-millionaire. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, that's what's right, Kurt Bevin. That's what's right, Kurt Bevin. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all, all joking aside, I mean, I think, think when... when um, Real darts fans. Um, what, 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 what I delight in is I delight in the casual fan seeing darts on TV, thinking, "Wow, that looks a great night." And if we was uh, five guys sitting in a bar now and we saw it on the TV and didn't know anything about it, we would all be excited to go and see what so, it's wow, like. That for must the, be great. That must they be great. Be goal. But what is interesting for us? What is interesting for us is the amount of people. Um, Russ and I speak to a lot of people at the World Championship because we have to do a lot of fan interaction. And we speak to a lot of people and they all say, you know, I came for the first time last year and I couldn't wait to come back this year. Or this is my seventh year. Or this is my ninth year. It's the highlight of my life coming to this championship. And we speak to people all over the world. All of us do it. 
and they say, oh, you know, I wouldn't miss this. It's my favourite tournament. I love coming to Blackpool. I love coming to Wolverhampton. I love doing this, love doing that. So we've built up this tremendous fan base. And what's interesting is the amount of repeat business we get and new yeah. business. So people are watching fans and they say, you know, I would like to go and see it. I wonder how different it looks. It's expensive. Because you often hear people say, well, I like to go to live sport. And then you get people say, well, actually, I prefer to watch it on the TV because you don't miss anything. It, you can see everything. And we are so lucky that the whole package of darts is one of the thrills in sport, a real thrill to go to live or a thrill to see on the TV. So we capture both audiences. We're very, very lucky. Absolutely. John, you are the great walk-on man. What is your best walk-on ever? The, the end of Phil Taylor, Barney in, uh, in Rotterdam? Yeah, I think Barney in Rotterdam would take some beating. I mean, that was that was a shock for all of us because we turned the corner at the Hohoi Stadium early in the afternoon to be met by a sea of orange. And we knew then we was in for something special. There is one um, man who works in, in Holland, Iron, who works for RTL. And he has been, you know, the backbone of Dutch, promoting of Dutch darts. And he said to me the week before Rotterdam, And we had a problem. We had to uh, ask Rotterdam, can you do two nights for us? Because yeah. we had a problem in the yep. UK with the snow. And they said, yes, we can. And I thought, well, oh, it was a small run in. There wasn't much time to pre prepare for that. And they did two incredible nights. And I remember talking to Ian uh, the week before, and he said to me, um, you have no idea how good this is going to be. You have no idea. And I, you know, I have an idea because I've worked in Las Vegas. I've done the big fights around the world. You know, I have actually been doing yeah. this for some time. I think I do have an idea. No, I had no idea. <laughs> I got there and it, and it was absolutely it? incredible. It was that good, yeah. I mean, it really was that good. Whether it's irrelevant for me that do it and these guys that do it every week We can easily sit in the ivory tower and say, you know, yeah, listen, we see it all the time, so what, big deal. But we have to take ourselves into the fan zone and look at that product and go, wow, that was incredible. It was first amazing. Time I, first time I've done Rotterdam, I've done the very first game that we've done in Rotterdam on the first year that we ever done mm. it at the Hoy. And stood there and saw 12,000 Sea of Dutch orange. fans, it was just orange everywhere. Yeah. I, I, it was incredible. Brought up into orange the tears. Yeah. Orange sea, yeah. It makes their hair yeah. on the back of your neck literally stand on. And I'm not, I'm not just, you know, I'm sure, I'm bad. sure I can speak for these guys. I'm not just saying that because we're in Holland. I've said it time and time again. It, it's it's very hard for people to pick their favourite actor, their favourite soccer player, because there's always two or three uh, occasions. And but that was for me very very special. And I think it was good for Barney because a lot of people don't realise how much pressure Barney had been under to leave the BDO, to join the PDC. He was the first one to really jump ship. He, he was a pathfinder for everybody else and he was under tremendous pressure. And at the time, there was only one player in the world. And that was Phil Taylor. And suddenly this guy came along who had been with the enemy, if you like, and now suddenly he's with us. And a lot of respect for him. And I think he was under tremendous pressure in his hometown or his home country to perform and that will always remain uh, 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 an incredible memory for me personally. Okay. Well Barney actually done that when he came over, he came over in 2006 mm, and 2006, 2006, yeah. 2006 League, and then yeah. the World Championship 2007, mm. which 2006, 2007 um, was probably one of the greatest finals there's ever been when he yeah. beat Phil Taylor the in the sudden dead leg. So, you know, so, you know, all of a sudden he was there. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's arguably another great, great absolutely, guy. Absolutely. absolutely. It, was, it, was, it, yeah. it was the last one at the Circus Tavern as well. Very last match at the yeah. Circus Tavern mm. from the PDC event. And, um, again, it was just uh, a fantastic moment yeah, within our game, you know. I, I mean? agree. You know, and there's been many, to be fair, there's been many fantastic times. Yeah, it's hard to That's pick one. one. It's hard to pick one. It is. I mean, it's I, like I, your favourite child, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's exactly. difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, none of, we all have children, but, you know, our, our favourite child is a hard one to pick, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, another question. Um, what do you think about uh, the crowd uh, last couple of years? Uh, we've noticed there's something uh, changing. The booing, the cheering, the shouting. Uh, It looks, it looks like uh, uh, it's become 
more uh, well, almost aggressive is not a good word, I think. But you're, yeah, I think mere, mere people, I think more so. people are, uh, are cheering, are shouting between throwing uh, before plays go to a double. What do you think about it, for example, Kurt? Um, well, it's got more boisterous, I suppose, but um, the only thing I really don't like is uh, whistling, Sorry. particularly when they're whistling when they're throwing. You know, if they've got three darts and they're whistling three times on the throw, it's obvious they're trying to put them off. If you've got 10,000 people booing, it's, it's hard one, to stop. It's one noise. It's, it's one, one noise. noise. You've just got one person that's whistling three times. I hate that. Or someone just whistles in general, it just goes through. Oh, you know? it does. I don't see the point of it. I cannot yeah, see the point yeah. of something just no, getting it's, it's bad. It's bad project. You know, I'll, I'll, it is, but... I think, I think what we've noticed is that a majority of the crowd police themselves. They do, you know, uh, they do. Which isn't their job, but, you know, they shouldn't have to, but they do. And if they see somebody misbehaving and they don't like, you know, you, you've got hardcore darts fans and you have the casual darts yeah. fan, and we're trying to appeal to all the fans. And um, I think if you misbehave at a darts match, I think you'll be self-policed, you know, which in many ways is a good thing. Um, but not always. But, uh, not always, but, you know, it does happen. We noticed in Germany last week um, the booing for for um, uh, yeah, really. going price, and then it was mentioned by the referee. You know, we'd really appreciate it yeah. if you just consider the fact that um, you know all you were doing is spoiling the, the guys. Going, there was no more booing, and I think people appreciate that. You know, w w what do you want him to do? Do you want to boo him forever? Is he the arch villain? No, he's not at all. You know, he's just an ordinary player. He shows his emotion. He wears his his, his heart on his mm -hmm. sleeve. You know, he shows great emotion, and. Um, and that you can't be blamed for. Uh, Peter so, Manley from many, yeah, many years ago. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They become the pantomime villain though. Yeah, sure. and, and, and everyone loved to hate him and, and he yeah, played it he played it perfectly to just the like crowd. Yeah, 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 they they the played it they played it yeah, they played the it, they played it to the crowd and the crowd mm. loved it and they interact. Um, you know, someone gets a price. I mean he's professional enough to uh, in yeah. all honesty to you know, the people will say, if everyone's burning him, he, he'll block it out um, and yeah. go and hit the double. He, he's that style of person, he's that type of player. Um, I'm not a great fan of it. It's not what I like to hear, you know, I don't want to hear everybody being happy. But it's it's any sport. If you go have a football match, if you go across yeah. the road here, if Ajax are playing FC20 or something like that, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, if, if they've gone over there, you know, FC, if FC20 are taking a penalty in front of the Ajax fans, are they going to be quiet? Of course they're not. You know what I mean? So yeah, right. it, it, it's it's sports crowd. It's a sports crowd, and you can take that. Moment. And you can't say with Snoop because you've got to be quiet. But in anywhere that you can let be cheering and shouting for your mm -hmm. team, for your player. Don't forget, these are not a team. This is a single player. So you can have Gerwin Price fans, mm -hmm. and you can have not Gerwin Price mm -hmm. fans. You can have Michael Van Gerwin fans and not Michael Van Gerwen. So you can have that happen all the time. So at the end of the day, um, as long as it's not blatantly right there in front of them, you know, as yeah. the guy's throwing, so, you know, so the right single right voice, right. the whistling, all that. As long as you haven't got that, then I don't think, I think the guys are concentrated enough to, um, and professional you enough to, 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 yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. certainly go in price. Go in price is, he's a solid lad. He, he, he's, you know, he's very, very strong mentally. What doesn't break, it makes you strong, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Maybe it will be his advantage. In a, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Because when I mean, people do start to cheer him, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> then watch him go. <laughs> yeah. You know, but as I say, I, I, don't like, I don't like that style of thing. You know, we try yeah, our best. There's not a lot we can do, unfortunately. You can turn in and say, you know, ask the crowd to shut up or whatever. Um, and, it's not the time. You know, yeah, <laughs> Makes him worse five, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 5,000, 7,000 <laughs> well, people. What I saw, yeah. What you don't do as a referee is you don't ask them to do something specific. I, ladies and gentlemen, please do not whistle, otherwise you'll have 7,000 people yeah. who will whistle, and that's what will happen. <laughs> yeah. So you just turn and say, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, please, very best of order, something like that. Um, and it's about as much as you can do, you know, it's, uh, and just hope they do. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who scored it, the Grand Slam final last year. If you were you once on the Grand Slam final last year? I've done the semi-final with, with Whitlock, with... Uh, Brian Price, uh, well, uh, and, Bryce and, Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Anderson. Anderson. No, uh, second round. I think it was Charles, wasn't it? It was Hinks, wasn't it? Was it Hinks? Paul, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was Paul Hinks. Yeah, um, I was second ref there, actually, so I was watching from the side. What do you think of that uh, incident with Bryce and Anderson? I think it's been documented. You know, it's not really for us to say, as I say, we're official. So at the end of the day, um, on something like that, 
that's all been documented. You can read all about it on the internet. One will say one thing, one will say the other. Um, it's not being in a court of law. You, you make your own opinion, your own assumption. Um, and but it's, it's, to judge and but it's not for me to be judge, jury, or, yeah. or chief executioner. But um, at the end of the day, I think with respect to that, that's you know. Um, I don't think that's for us to really comment yeah, on. We have the but DRA, we, 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 yeah, we, the DRA, the DRA, the DRA Regulation yeah, Authority yeah. have already dealt with it. And, um, you know, then I think that's really down to them. Quick uh, question for you. You are new. Well, new. You were seven years here. But you are a new calling. You are a game shot and a match. It's not the first one. Game shot and a, and a second leg. But you is different. Is this another way of calling? Or do you well, special? Look, because I'm quite new, so when I first start, you, you shout something, and then you watch it and you go, I don't like that. So, you know, you try and improve. So, I, over the years, I've gradually improved. Everyone's the same. Russell will be the same when he started. Absolutely. If you look at videos from the, when he started, even just seven, eight, nine years ago, different to now. So, we're always changing, always improving, and I, I try and do it for the better, obviously. And I believe that a referee is not just there to referee a dance match, they're there as part of the entertainment as well. And that is true. So, like, you don't just shout 180, you, you have to deliver it in, a, in, a, yeah. you know, in an emphatic style. Um, and I believe that's with the, the 177s, the, the game shots and high finishes, you know, I, I think it, rather than just a cool game shot, I believe it, I should give it some welly because it's, it's a great shot under pressure, particularly for the guy sat on 32, you know, yeah. um, and then just move on to the next one, go back to my normal voice, move on, just forget it, you know, same with the nine data, it's one leg, you cool game shot in, a, in a, an exciting voice and then ninth leg, John throw first, game on, just again, back onto, onto square one. Um, but yeah, it just, it just makes it better. The commentators, they raise their voice, don't they, when there's something exciting happening. So um, it's just part and parcel. Well, it's definitely, it's definitely part of the show. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, you're up there on the camera as well. Special, um, moments, and, uh, special moments should be uh, uh, highlighters. And you can do that. Yeah. Cool. 170 finishes. Yeah. A lot, yeah. 174, 177, 177. Exactly the same, I think. Yeah. Uh, boys, thank you for coming here. Absolutely. Absolute pleasure. Thank Mensen, you. Thank you for watching. Let's have a duimpje achter here under. Abonneren kan hier ook onder en dan zien we jullie bij de volgende koffie met. Dank je wel, dank je wel.